Rift Riding. Let's talk about it. All right, so script writing for documentaries, it's, it's a little bit special because you really have to do a lot of work before you actually can start writing. It comes down to a lot of research and that sort of thing, but I just love the research phase just because that's when things start to become like, okay, this is actually something that is for real. It's not just something that's made up uh, in your head. Uh, and the more research you do, the better your story will be I think because it all comes down to finding the unique uh, angle of things and that's done in the research phase I usually start off with like looking at things in the media or like articles it could, it could be pretty much anything but stuff that is online about the topic that you're searching for what I'm trying to find and figure out is basically an angle so I research like New York Times Facebook Twitter like all these places Wikipedia and I try to find like connections and just a little bit of a rabbit hole to go into and then try to discover and, and like pick stuff out of that and then from that I try to structure the idea and for me it's it's super important that all these things are saved so you save up everything all the material that you gather and you try to like put that into a text document you put all the links in uh, you could also like save it on a hard drive or something but I usually just save the links uh, and then I go through everything and try to like filter out the stuff that's unnecessary but the important thing is to learn about the story and the theme of the story on a deeper level because then you can start to piece things together finding the right type of characters and all that for your cinematic story but it all comes down to doing the research first it's super important that you have those puzzle pieces to be able to write and if you don't do a lot of work before you sit down it's very hard to understand your story so it comes down to doing that research but it also comes down to going out and shooting And then also think about like how do you package this in a cinematic way so instead of just going out and finding a character I would advise you to first of all think about all the cinematic qualities that you want your film to have for instance what location do you think is cinematic for the story what type of conflict is it that the story can can kind of encapsulate itself in to make it cinematic don't think about just the quality of like okay so how do I tell this with b-roll type of cinematic think about it in like how do I embody the cinematic qualities of this film and story into the character that I pick and try to then just follow and everything will be there you will have the cinematic uh, story and environment for the story you will have the cinematic action because of the conflict think about those things it's much more important before you cast for me, the most important thing of making a doc is to just get started. And that's the part that I think most people struggle with. I just go out and I start shooting and then that will lead me in the right direction. I think if you stay too long in the researching phase, you won't be able to write something that's really valuable. I usually try to go out and shoot the first time as quickly as I can. For the Kino project it took probably a year or something but that was because it was in Canada sometimes if you have it more easy accessible maybe it makes sense to just go and shoot for like a day or two and then come back and then you know like okay so this is what we got because it's always going to differ from what you had in the writing room what I do is, is basically write the docs during the whole process of making the film so the first step to get started is the research phase the second step is to try to piece a narrative structure or something cinematic together from that that leads me to pick location it leads to picking a character and and all those things but then once you have that you need to go out and you need to test it so you start shooting that's the first step but this process it goes on through the whole process of making the film until the editing is done so I go back 
if after every shoot I go back, I review everything, I think about the story, I rewrite the story, I do more research, I think about the angles, how do I connect things. So the writing process is really something that is this, what I've talked about, but it's ongoing until the film is done. So it goes in and out, in and out. You go out and shoot, you come back, you review the material, you write new scenes that you need to tell the story and deepen the story. You re-edit the story or rework the narrative from what you got because the other idea you had didn't work. It all comes down to being flexible and going with the story. So don't make up your mind that this is the story beforehand. You need to go out and, and try to test the story. And then once you've done that, you really know what the story is. It always changes or you're not listening to the story. You've just made up your mind and making the idea you had from the start and that's super boring. So let me know in the comment section what you thought about this and how do you write your scripts for documentaries. Oh yeah, I got this question from Jaden Layler. Neistat versus Wallstrom methods. On a feature dance cam, uh, like Sony mirrorless, uh, there's a lot of flexibility with high compression, able to do a lot, always crop, reframe, 4K in post, AF lenses with good zoom range, good low light, and very easy to get the job done. On higher end cameras, cinema cameras mainly, uh, it's hard because you eat storage really fast. Uh, you have worse autofocus, if any, uh, you, they're much bigger and heavier, not good in low light, uh, but of course everything is much more beautiful in the end. Uh, I just switched from a Sony to a high bitrate cam, I'm finding it kind of frustrating. What are your thoughts? Flexibility versus beauty, quality versus quantity. So this is, it's a big uh, step to go to a cinema camera. Because the thing is, when, when you're on a different camera, like a, you're on a consumer level camera, they're made for you to have everything at ease and you don't really need to be that good of a DOP or, or filmmaker at all to use them. That's really the point, to get the camera to do a lot of that work for you. What you lose by working on cameras like that is, especially like on a higher level, when you start to get talented and can get more out of the camera, because that's the, the thing here. When you're good enough to get more out of the camera than the camera can do for you, you're on the level where now it's time to step to a camera which is more manual, less auto. And the thing is, before that, maybe there's not that big like, okay, advantage in going to a more cinematic camera because you don't get everything out of it. You might get like a Sony camera uh, Sony mirrorless camera to look better uh, just because it's doing a lot of the work for you but in the long term that's not a good way to work letting the camera do the work for you long term you're much better off learning the cinema cameras and learning how to properly expose properly uh, focus all those things not having it auto in the end that's how you learn the most by practicing so I would say like taking that shortcut even though it might look like a good decision in the beginning because you get better images out of the camera, like in this very difficult situation when you do docs where you can't control everything. So any little thing that you can get is an advantage. And by learning cameras in and out and, and really knowing how to manipulate things in terms of what light to add, what angles uh, can you do uh, in a different way to make it look better, all those things, they matter especially when you do docs. So I think it comes down to that in the end. Like if you are on a level where you can't really uh, get the most out of a cinema manual type of camera, then maybe it does make sense to use an auto camera just to get it to be fun to make things and make them look good. But eventually you're gonna have to take the leap. Uh, otherwise you'll never be a professional, I would think at least, or who's going to pay you to do that like you're going to get paid for what type of equipment you use as well so i think it just comes down to understanding where you're at in your career and where you fit into the whole industry of things and if you want to live off it or if you just want to make films for yourself because if you just want to make films for yourself then 
go out and do it on whatever camera it doesn't matter it's up to you to decide which is the right one but if you want to make it into a career it makes more sense to to go the cinema camera way okay see ya